You're going to love this next guy. He's only 23 years old, but, boy, is he making a difference. Mm -hmm. He's been dubbed the Marcus Rashford of terrible housing. Quajo Twenaboa has gone viral for exposing some of Britain's worst social housing after living in a mouldy, cockroach-infested apartment with his sick father for many months. Well, poor social housing is an ongoing issue in the UK. On Friday, the skeletal remains oh. of a 61-year-old woman, Sheila Salawani, were found after she had laid dead in her flat for nearly three years. Oh. Her neighbours in Peckham had complained to the council over 50 times because of the smell of rotting meat. Oh, God. They complained about flies, they complained about maggots. Three years. And then finally on Friday, police took a battering ram to the door of the flat, broke in and found that poor woman's body on the sofa in the living room. Well, Quajo joins us now. Um, good morning to you. I think this mm -hmm. story highlighted for many, many people the disgraceful neglect mm. of people in uh, social housing, council housing. I mean, firstly, the appalling lack of dignity mm -hmm. for a resident, mm -hmm. for a woman, mm -hmm. to have been left for three years. Secondly, the total ignoring mm. of residents, mm. neighbours, mm. who were concerned about her mm. and also concerned about their own living conditions mm. in the wake of what happened. Now, you've been to see the housing secretary, haven't you? You've been to see Michael Gove. Yes. To talk about this, what, what problems did you raise with him? Oh, I, I mean, I went in there with, with 14 points, um, a long list of things to talk about, and that, that point of residents just being constantly ignored for so long yeah. was one of them. And it's been happening to so many people that I've seen across the country. I was an example of that. I've lived in social housing. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was sent this story and I've, I've read it. And it, it, even hearing it now just boils my blood because I've been saying it for so long. Yet it's so common where tenants are just ignored, dehumanised. And this is one example where they've just been left. Well, what you do is, this is fantastic. I mean, you, you don't just sort of write letters and send emails. You get your camera. Uh, when you're contacted by residents who say, we've been saying X is wrong for yeah. God knows how long and we just can't get a response, you go around with your camera, you, you mm -hmm. video the evidence, yeah. sometimes the disgusting evidence, mm -hmm. and you post it online. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Then they get a response, don't yeah. they? And that is it. Um, that is it. And it, I learned it very early on because I was backed into a corner with my own, um, own situation and I had to take it to Twitter, I had to take it to social media. I was very, very embarrassed. What did you know. actually do exactly? So I went around my house and I took photos and videos of the inside of my house, uploaded it to Twitter. That then was shared thousands of times. I then went around my whole estate to 450 plus houses and done the same there. And you named and shamed the housing association involved? I did, into completing works on my estate. And then since then, I've been going around other estates. And one thing that I learned is with these housing associations and councils, you can, you can complain to anyone. You can complain to the regulators, the housing ombudsman, your MPs, and still be ignored. But then when you publicly disgrace <laughs> them and nationally disgrace them, they seem to work and put things that they're able to then complete works and, and prioritise tenants all of a sudden. And it's an absolute shame, I think. This, I mean, this is mould and damp that is just left to fester. Mm -hmm. There is... You went into one woman's... Uh, flat. She had mm. three young children. It was infested with cockroaches. Mm -hmm. There were cockroaches under one of the children's beds. The yeah. children were too afraid to go to bed at night yeah. because of that infestation. I mean, you yeah. can see them. You move a suitcase and look at them all. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the pest exterminators had refused to go into the bedrooms because there were too many of them. Yeah. There were too many cockroaches <laughs> yeah. for them to, yeah. to deal with. And there was also um, a really bad leak causing mould in that property and um, the workmen wouldn't come in to, to address that leak because of the cockroaches. Oh. So it's just a huge cycle where tenants are then left to suffer. The mum reported a couple of days um, before I went there that she had to remove a cockroach from her ear. Oh. Um, that had oh. got in there. That's how bad things but are. How, but can you explain to us, because you, 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 you're at the front end of this, so you can, you can describe what actually happens. Mm. When these complaints, these multiple complaints, are mm. made to a housing association, like the one in Peckham, mm. where this poor woman was, was lying dead in a flat for mm. three years mm. and rotting, I mean, just appalling, 
Why don't they do anything? Why can't they send someone around with a key, open the door and see what the problem is? Why do they just ignore the complaints? I think it's just um, failures on multiple levels. I mean, you're lucky to even get through to them on the phone. I mean, it's, I've sat hours in some cases trying to ring up on behalf of people to get through to various houses. And they don't pick up? Yeah, you just cannot. Or when you do, you're um, disrespected on the phone or spoken down to. Or they do say they will come out, don't show up. I've had multiple times where I've taken and spoken to residents where they've taken time off of work um, sat in their house and no one showed Nobody up. Comes. To no, and that's happened time and time again. Um, so it's failures at different levels um, when you complain and just being ignored. Yeah, and that, that's exactly what happened to the residents. Yeah. Can you imagine, I mean, Andrew and Kevin, can you imagine smelling that smell? Uh, it's staggering. The, the, the resident in the flat underneath that poor woman's flat mm. said that when she opened her windows in the summer, flies came in, there were maggots. It and and the smell of rotting flesh i mean how much did they need to complain before they were taken seriously i think it, it's absolutely it, it's shocking a, it's it's scandalous actually and weren't they didn't nobody in the council realize they're not getting any mo rent money or income coming in well th i think there's a dispute over that harriet harman mm. who is actually the local mp says so she is completely unsatisfied with the response from the housing association which is peabody and i just want to read, oh, read out, the out. Response. you must it's extraordinary because this is remarkable remember three years that poor woman was in that flat. Three years, her neighbours had been complaining to the council. Peabody said, We are saddened to learn that our resident has passed away. Our dedicated tenant and family support team carry out regular welfare checks with people who may be vulnerable. Well, once every five years. We did make repeated attempts to check on the resident and liaised with the police to try and make contact. We are offering support to neighbouring residents who will understandably be upset and our teams are there today. We are working closely with the authorities and will investigate all of the circumstances and actions taken in this case. I mean... It's total bull, isn't it? Yeah, I they mean, couldn't care bull. less. Look, they it, couldn't it, care it's less. Been a, the point. It's been a colossal failure yeah. on mm -hmm. the, th the woman of... The reason the neighbours are understandably colossal. upset is because three years yeah. they yeah. were ignored. 50 complaints. But, it, but it's probably the worst example of a wider problem. Fantastic mm. campaigning. Yeah, well and done. Naming and, and shaming them. Look, I grew up in council housing. Yeah, you, I, you did as well. Did. And you yeah. could see it was sometimes bureaucratic, unresponsive. But it seems to have got worse. It's, well, I mean, the, the social that statement that Susanna just read out is the utter shamelessness of it. Yeah, yeah. They don't. I mean, what they should have said was, "Have we screwed up? Yeah. We are yeah, yeah. so yeah. sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we failed look, her. We failed and we her. Failed her. The, all the residents. And we are looking into this yeah. pronto. We are yeah. really making sure this yeah. something like this will never happen. That's what they should have said. Yeah. Instead, they come up with this nonsense, yeah. this verbiage yeah. about offering support. Actually, yeah. they're not offering support and at all. Joe, one of the things I think you've identified is too often mm. the residents themselves get blamed. Mm. There's this idea that. Well, it's the way you treat mm, your yes. flat. It's yeah. the way you live your lifestyle. Yeah. So we're yeah. not going to uh, yeah. intervene. And I think this is a prime example of housing associations coming out and trying to justify what it is that's happened instead of them holding their hands up. And this is what tenants feel as though it's a huge kick in the teeth when they come out and do this, but they do it time and time again. In my case, when I had reported mine and um, it, it was covered on the news, mine came out and said, we're sorry that Quajo feels as though he hasn't received the service that he deserved. It's a non-apology. My dad apology, died in that house. We're sorry yeah, if, you, or we're sorry died if you're that. upset. Yeah. I think, yeah. if, if any of you are watching this, you should be ashamed of yourself, yeah. not yeah. just for allowing that situation yeah. to happen. Well, and I know you'd say, it's, this is an easy bandwagon to jump on. Well, maybe it is, uh, and that's because you, you made this bandwagon. But that non-apology, mm. th that evasion of your responsibilities mm. is a disgrace. Well, Harriet Harman has said she is shocked at how th that poor woman's death was overlooked and remains unsatisfied with Peabody's response. Yeah. Quajo, you just mentioned that your father died in the, the housing that you had to live in. Yeah, he, he did, and I made it, and I've, I've made this point before. My, my dad died amongst that. I mean, cockroaches, mice, damp, mould while I was receiving. He had a soft, um, stage four esophageal cancer, so he was being fed for his stomach, living amongst that, receiving medical treatment. But I've made this point time and time again. People are dying in poor social housing and poor housing in the country and have been for absolute decades. This isn't a new thing, but it's just been ignored. It hasn't been prioritised and it's been brushed under the mat for so so long and Do it's only now. you feel that Michael Gove listened yeah. and, will, and will change things? Well, yes, when I went there, I made, I made these points yeah. and um, he, he was open and he agreed and he said, this is the case. And he even said that, he, that 
um, I made the offer to take him around and some advisors to some of these properties I go to, and he's very open to it. Good. So I'm, I'm, yeah, looking forward to that and okay. hopefully getting well, changed. Your, your case is unarguable. Mm. I mean, you know, you have an absolutely unarguable case. Mm. Congratulations for everything you've done. Thank As I said you, at the man. top, 23 and making a difference. Yeah, yeah. yeah thank you. Great.